Now, we're finishing up the Bible today, and we're just going to basically talk about how the Bible was actually assembled. Where did it come from, and how did it get put together? Now, we started this whole series by asking a simple question, and that is, how do you know what is true? How do you know what is real? So, we kind of dug into the notion that every person needs to know or have some way in which they determine this is what's real and what's true. And so we decided to get people to really understand why the Bible is a trustworthy source. So what is the Bible? All right. Well, Bible comes from the Latin word meaning books. And if you go back into the real ancient tongue from which language, or Latin came from, you'll find out that the word Bible actually means scrolls. Okay, And it's unlike any other library of books. So it's a library of books. And the Christian library, known as the Bible, is so different. It's different than the Vedas. The Vedas are are the sacred writings of Hinduism. Okay? They are voluminous. That's a really big word, right? So if you're a young person and you ever want to impress mom and dad, just say, hey, when it comes to dessert, I want voluminous dessert. Okay? That means more, right? You'll get lots more. Volume. Lots of it. Okay. And uh, I don't have time to go into exactly what they are, but then the next one is the Tripitaka. This basically means the three baskets, and it is the sacred writings of Buddhism. And it's bas- they're kind of all about how to run a monastery. Okay. Then there is the Quran. And the Quran is a 150 chapters. They're called surahs, and they are organized from longest to shortest, and they are supposedly visions that Muhammad had in a cave given to him by Allah. And they were, he recorded these in about the 7th century AD, so about 600 and some odd years after Christ was alive, okay? Then there is the Tanakh, and the Tanakh, like the Vedas, is extremely old. This is the Jewish Bible. It's basically the Old Testament, okay? You have the Torah, you have the Nevi'im, and you have the Ketuvim, three sections of the Old Testament, those 39 books. The most popular criticism today in the world, particularly in America, and if you're on uh, Instagram, if you're on TikTok, if you're on YouTube, you see this on the news all the time. If you listen to podcasts, Joe Rogan has talked about this. I go into this more in depth on the Salty Pastor, the last episode that came out on Thursday. And it's basically this. The Bible was created in the fourth century by the emperor Constantine, the Emperor of Rome, at the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD in order to consolidate his power in Rome. And I would just like you to know that this is patently false. It's malarkey. It's hooey. It's ridiculous. It is a suspension of all reality and historical fact. And yet, more people in America believe it and talk about it today than anything else. Why is that? What is that phenomena? Well, psychiatrists have actually uh, have an entire uh, 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 terminology for what happens in large masses of people. It's called the illusory truth effect. And what it is, is it describes how when we hear the same false information repeated again and and again, we often come to believe it is true, even though we know and believe it's false when we first hear it. In 2 Timothy 4.13, excuse me, it says, Paul's telling Timothy in the last letter he wrote, this is what he says, when you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas, and my scrolls, especially the parchments. 
In the Bible itself, we see a specific reference to the fact that Paul was having Timothy collect these books, forming this library, okay? And this early library, even references in the New Testament to it, was formed very, very early on, and we have historical records of this. Another reference that's important to understand is 2 Peter 3, 15 and 16, because the apostle Peter equates the letters that Paul wrote with holy scripture. Notice what he says in 1 Peter chapter 3, uh, towards the very end, verse 15, he goes, bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. So he's saying that Paul wrote with inspiration from the Holy Spirit. He writes the same way in all of his letters, speaking in them of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable people distort, as they do the other scriptures to their own destruction. So what he does is he, com he compares and equates Paul's epistles, his letters, with Holy Scripture. My friends, the most important part of this series was to show you that the foundation of your faith is not myth. It's not legend. It's not something that people thought up and would be a great story. No, it is rooted in history. It is based on intellectual rigor. It has archaeological as well as historical fact as its foundation. Because the most important thing about the Bible is that it is true. It's how you can know. It won't tell you what diet to have. It doesn't tell you how to write a ballad or a love song or what kind of music you're supposed to like. It won't tell you what good fashion sense is. You should know that by the clothes I wear until my wife got a hold of me. Um, it doesn't tell you what color your hair should be. It doesn't tell you where you should live or what kind of economic career you should uh, have to uh, support yourself in life. But what it does do is it tells you there is a God. This is what he's doing. This is who you are. And if you want to find meaning and purpose in life, you must accept the reality of the truth about yourself, who God says you are and why he came to save you. That's the truth of the Bible. And we will forever stand on its firm foundation.